guys, that's Dorota Paliska International Nail Artisan Educator here and I'm in with Fiona today. So she broke one nail and we are going to do the rebalance and I will show you how I'm sculpting a coffin shape nail. So I will tell you all the tricks and tips uh, for doing those coffin shapes. So when the client comes in and I will do a full set of the coffin nails, of course, we just sanitize her hands, my hands. Yeah, you can have it. <laughs> I just thinking like, should I behave for the video or not? Um, so yeah, Fiona is a client of ours for the last... Ten, probably 10 years or something. Mm, so we are going to start with pushing back the cuticles. Just nice and firm. Don't go at this angle because you can damage the matrix, which is a really um, important part of the nail. And also where you've got lunula, these parts are much softer. They are not fully keratinized, so they are much more gentle. And we need to be extremely careful with that. Now, um, when I'm using the file, I'm always itching the edges of the file so I don't cut the client. Now we are going to shorten the free edge of the nail. You don't want it to be too long. And I always prefer to do it on the round shape. I also leave a tiny bit of the free edge so it's easier to hook the form in. And I will show you how to apply the forms as well. Okay, then we are etching the surface of the natural nail. Like making sure there is no bits and pieces. If you don't have an e-file, I can show you. So here, this white part, that's a cuticle and you need to remove it. I'm not talking about the skin, which is on the finger. I'm talking the cuticle, which is on the nail plate. So when the school teach you, that's what they mean by the removal of the cuticle. So like you can either do it with the um, edges of the file, like you can see it is nicely coming off. You could also do it with this side of the cuticle pusher and like scrape it away. And you can see quite a lot of stuff is coming in. So that's the way you would do it if you don't have an e-file. I have an e-file and that's the K38 which I'm using in a salon. Also guys, if you want, I could do the video for you to review a few different e-files because I've got a huge collection of them right now. Uh, so I could really uh, show you all of them. Um, like how they work and compare them but let's go to the cuticles so low speed and I'm going left side first like don't go again at the angle like you're going quite flat to the nail to remove any dead tissue and you can see it how nice and clean it is okay so I'm working only on the nail plate let's put back to the reverse I clean it so I can show you as well guys so and I've got bits and pieces here which I'm going to remove I don't want that on the nail plate, okay? So, in the terms of cuticles, that's what would cause the lifting if we do not remove these parts, okay? Straight away, I'm going to trim it, those bits and pieces. Usually, I trim after I apply the gel and after I've done the shaping because uh, uh, this way, there is no risk of hurting the client. I'm just going to straight away touch up a tiny bit. Okay, this way our nail plate is really beautifully prepped. Then blue scrap to dehydrate the nail plate. And now nail forms. So I'm using the Nail Perfect Sculpting Forms. Peel it back, the sticker goes in here, and then we are rolling it. So I want to pre-pinch the form in between my fingers, like roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, so it has a nice shape. Otherwise, the nails are going to be really um, fat <laughs> looking. And then I close those first wings only, uh, just so it's easier to slide it for me. And I hide the client view. If I do hide the client view, they do not help me, which is much easier to slide the form underneath of the nail. Okay? I want the form to be nice and straight. And by straight, I mean straight this way, but also like so the form doesn't come down. I don't like when the nails are growing too much down. So um, like they have grown quite a lot and some of them already are growing down. You can check the client view as well. I'm going this way and check how is this form sitting. I have straightened it a little bit because it was wonky. So and then once I'm happy with it, we can... Apply the nail prep, which is an extra uh, nail dehydrator, because during the form application, we might have touched the natural nail. So nail prep, uh, put the fan on so it's dry quicker. You cannot apply the universal air bond until this is uh, dry, because otherwise they both neutralize each other, okay? And the universal air bond gives you a really nice adhesion of the natural nail, so they last you a really long time. Then wait for it to dry and let's start the sculpting. So on the previous sets we have used the dark nude and now on this one I'm going to swap for a light rose. Uh, I'm not sure now which one is my favorite. So for any sets like I like different ones, but the light rose we are going to use uh, uh, today. 
so that's given me a time to dry and then using the oval gel brush which i like because it's quite precise around the cuticle area i'm going to apply nice and thin layer through the entire nail plate so nice and thin layer but at the same time like you want to have some tiny bit of product in there pick up another scoop direct the client finger down the way so the gravity helps you and look what i'm doing with the client finger so that's a one thing one side other side i'm working with the client finger so even if i keep my brush still look like my hand on the brush is still i can do the job with my finger but if i do job with both my left hand and my right hand i can be a little bit quicker i mean obviously now i'm extremely slow because i'm trying to explain the things to you uh guys but uh, that's that's the quickest way of doing the application so we're going for a coffin shape so nice and thin at the free edge and then once i'm happy with it we're going to cook it so doing a sculpted set on the client is always more difficult because they can bang with the forms or or they can do other bits and pieces now i'm cleaning my uh, brush and the best thing for uh, cleaning the brushes is a tiny bit of the uv cleanser don't mistake uv cleanser for a blue scrap uv cleanser is a much more gentle product which removes the inhibition from the gels and it's not going to dull them uh, that's why i can clean the brushes safely with it i kind of tend to get it into the nice point as well like and the brushes last me years really guys i mean the only reason why i changed the brush is because by accident i have left it in the sun or something and it did cure <laughs> yeah but we have been spoiled with the nice weather uh, so i'm curing the needle only half of the time i take it back then I tap it to check if it's nicely cured and apply the pinching clamp. You don't have to apply the pinching clamp because we have already pinched the form, but I'm just going a little bit more extreme. Um, so I'm just pinching the snail a little bit. So tiny bit at the free edge and then the entire... Um, the entire uh, end of the needle do not apply it too high because it will be first of all very painful for our clients and then secondly the pinch will be too strong and the needle could crack halfway through to the matrix and it could cause a really big damage and also you wouldn't pinch the needles which are weak because that could cause the product to lift from the sides um, the needle plate which doesn't take a gel well will leave the product so uh, do not pinch those type of needles and i maybe don't recommend it if you if you don't know what you're doing okay now so that's another half time cure i can release the pinching clamp and you can see it like the the shape of the needle is already much nicer okay we are going to build up the structure now so i'm going to apply nice and thin layer again through the entire needle at this stage you can remove the form if you're sure 100 percent that you've got enough product so let me check on this side because i'm not sure of this part yet yeah, but i should be having enough i can pull the form down and we are going to do the structure so i'm for the structure i'm picking up a really large scoop of the product on the one side of my brush and we are going to uh, build up our apex okay so really lots of product on our apex and then closer to the end i'm applying less product so that's the side view and that will be plenty for me i don't want too thick on the sides and by the time i put it in it spreads inside when we are applying uh, quite a lot of product, I would suggest you ask your client to remove the hand after a couple seconds just to slow down the curing process so they don't feel the exothermic reaction. You can put it out and then back and just play whenever you yep. need it. Yep. Um, it does ha it's really, you don't feel it as much when you're doing a rebalance, but when you're doing a new set um, and we are applying quite a lot of product, then we can feel it a little bit. So I'm going to fully cook this needle and then I show you how to shape it. Okay, and when it's fully cured, we can just remove the inhibition layer and I can show you how to shape it. So I'm removing inhibition layer and then we are going to shape it. So first of all, one side. You want to kind of shape it into the V shape. So one side, other side. And don't file too long in a one side. You want to file it a little bit equally from both sides just so you don't over file okay let me show you the filing line so you can see it my filing lines are here and that's the place I only touch and you can see it it already looks pretty nice we have to shorten the free edge okay and because there is only a little bit product at the free edge it doesn't take me long time to shorten it so I have shortened the free edge and now I know that I need to file more on the sides okay so one side and then other side one side and other side. I can shorten the free edge again. You 
Okay, so that's the coffin, coffin shape. Then file everything around the cuticle area. So on the sides, around the cuticle area, you want to blend it everything in here so there is no product uh, which is loose. And then start smoothing the entire nail. So I'm always lifting it a little bit so I can see the hairline to check the entire shape of the nail. I'm also checking how it, this is looking. So it's still a little bit too long. I need to shorten it. And if you shorten it, you need to smooth it out a little bit more from the top to have a nice shape. Then we are going to clean the dust and buff it the entire nail. So again, make sure there is no catchy places. There is nothing in there. So buff it in the entire nail, remove the dust and then check the client view because the nails always look slightly different from the client view. So after checking the client view, I can see it that this side is a little bit not straight. <laughs> and that's I could also taper this side a little bit as well. So they are the final touches after you redust the nail. And yeah, that's it. So that's how I would build up the new um, new nail uh, on the client. I'm just cleaning the dust and that's what we have created today. I hope you have guys learned a lot to, um, how to sculpt a new set of the nails. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Glittery Hexen, bye for now. Mm -hmm.